Alrighty, so Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up the mop crayfish or crawdad or freshwater lobster, whatever you weren't trying to imitate. But uh, this came about from a live feed, a challenge to do a mop crayfish. So um, this is from the live feed, and I'm going to try and replicate it now in a, in a little fly tying tutorial. Have a little bit of fun. We got an A Rex. Uh, this is a TP650. It's a bent streamer. This is a size 2. Uh, you pretty much need a 2 or a 4 for this size. Um, we're going to be using the Semperfly wax thread in an A dot, and um, I don't plan on using the uh, rotary function a ton uh, during this uh, tutorial, so we're just going to use our regular bobbin, and uh, we're just going to uh, get our thread um, down to the bend, and we're going to build up a little bit of a bump. This is very similar to the crayfish pattern um, that I uh, posted uh, not too long ago. Um, probably more effective fly but this one's a lot of fun we're gonna be using a different uh, carp dub this is blaze orange we're just gonna take a small chunk out we're trying not to get a ton of the rubber legs but it's inevitable and it's not gonna noodle on as well with the rubber legs but uh, just go ahead and do your best if it doesn't really noodle very much it's okay we're just trying to build a nice little bump here and if you need to just grab it with your fingers and manually do that dubbing so it's nice and tight you want a nice real bump there and then any excess rubber legs just pull right out just get rid of them and uh, we don't need them they're not um, really going to benefit us and then pull anything back you can so that it's going backwards so we got a nice little bump right there all right that looks pretty good so we're going to be making some eyes and if you know how to make eyes you can go ahead and fast forward but we're just going to be using some 30 pound mono uh, because it's a smaller hook, we're not going to be uh, burning the ends. Uh, we're just going to be applying a little bit of black resin uh, to keep them a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to cut out about a 3-inch uh, little strip here. It makes it a little bit easier to work with and to uh, tie them in in the X manner. So just grab a little bit of uh, black uh, resin. You can use nail polish. It just takes a little bit longer to dry and just dab a little bit on. Um, and then we will get the other side, making sure to kind of keep that uh, other end facing down so that the resin doesn't walk. Whoops, that was close. Good save by me. And that's going to be a little bit bigger of an eye, but um, we're good. You can always, if you mess up, just snip a little off. we got three inches here to work with. We really only need about half an inch total. And then I like these to be a little bit more durable. And so what I do is I take a little bit of a thinner resin that brushes on, apply it, and uh, that way it gives a nice shiny coating. Also helps with durability and, you know, going to take some rocks or hits of teeth or chomps and still go pushing hard. So go ahead and cure that up. Try to rotate it in all directions so that you can get uh, it fully cured. Sometimes I'll twist it and I'll get a smoke. And, yeah, that one doesn't look as good, but... I'm not going to waste uh, your guys' time and redo this eye. We'll just go with it. So try to make your eyes better than me. And so if you have this concaving up like that, you just fold it, make an X. That causes the eyes to automatically want to go opposite directions. I pinch it, and then I do about three to four wraps just right here on that X, trying to keep it on the top of the shank of the hook at this point. And then we will take a look and see the length, um, making sure... Keep that tag in so it's going back, but those look fairly decent. The one's a little bit longer, so you can just shorten it at this point, but those look fairly good. So we'll continue going backwards till we get to that bump, and that bump's going to push them up a little bit, but sometimes I just like to do a little figure eight here, and I'll do it a couple times, and that will separate them, of course, and then if you want them to uh, go a little bit more together, just wrap back towards that bump. And you can see we've kind of created a second bump there, so we'll go ahead and just um, smooth that out so we got a nice underbody, uh, build a little bit of bulk, cut out our tag in right here at the bend. And if you're not using a, a bent hook, you can go ahead and just snip it about with, you know, three, four eye lengths, uh, pretty much where you tie your dumbbell eyes. And we are good. So we're just using a rooster um, saddle, I guess. Um, Strung Rooster is the name I'm thinking of. And this is an orange, but it looks very, very crawdad, crayfish, burnt orange to me. And so we're going to go ahead and tie this in by the tip. And uh, let's go ahead and see how this, you know, spins up. So let's do a little half hitch here. I'll do a second half hitch just to keep it in place. And usually using the rotary is not advised with this uh, 
eye here, but we'll go ahead and do it. So just spin that up. If you wrap back and forth on each other, that's fine. You want these tips to lay down, some of them about at the eye, but a majority of them um, a little bit, but you know, not quite as far as those uh, eyes coming off the back. So I know this is confusing. We were talking about eye of the hook, eyes in the on the bend. So maybe I'll call them. I'll try to be a little bit more specific. So just go ahead and tie that off, and then do a few wraps back. And we're going to be folding this uh, hackle down over itself to create kind of a fan. So just basically preen those back the best you can, trying to get all of them to go back, making sure not to clump them. Try to get an even fan, and then we are just going to wrap up and over. It's going to be a little bit difficult to get this underside with the hook. Make sure you get that bobbin in there using the tip, um, and we'll just go back. See, I went a little too far there, so I'll back off. That looks about perfect, and as we snug it, it's going to fan out just a little bit. And then we'll just clean this up, to clean up the body a little bit. You can do this just by wrapping over and over and over again. So that looks pretty good. Those are representing our small antenna, and we're going to be um, putting a little bit more dubbing now at this point to create another little bump. And I call this the donut bump because it's going to look like a donut sitting there. So you want to just make sure you wrap that dubbing up and over itself, fan it back, do a couple nice tight securing wraps, and bam, there we go. So we are progressing. This is a um, speckled orange leg. Um, I don't have the package for this, but basically it's a rubber leg that's orange and got some black dots on it. I'm just going to grab one, fold it in half, and then as I wrap backwards, um, try to separate those onto each side. They're real fun to work with at this point and to keep out of the way. I need to get a material clip on this so that I can keep them back. But I don't want them to go on the side, I want them to remain kind of on top and you want to wrap them almost to that donut uh, ball of dubbing we had. If you wrap it onto that it's going to really fan those out and they'll be miserable to tie with. Now because this is the mop cray we are going to be um, using mop material. This is an orange and I'm just going to pr pull off a little bit so I can get to the core, twist up my thread and I'll go ahead and tie that in and see how those rubber legs just get in our way. But just pull everything back. And I want this to come straight back off this side. I want it to be about even with the eyes. My eyes are facing a little bit up right now, but as we drag that along the bottom, it should be just right. So, And we'll just do the same thing to the other side. Get our thread nice and tight. Grab that core and just kind of grab a little bit more of that bulk. Check to make sure the lengths of the arms are the same length. Get our rubber legs out of the way and we are golden. Let's pinch that and do a bunch of securing wraps now. Maybe I should do it so you guys can see. So um, we're also trapping that rubber leg to go back at this point um, as well. So multi-purpose on uh, tying these in and uh, it's really nice. Not too bad. That looks pretty good. These mops could be a little bit longer. This is why I recommend it for a size 2, 4, or 6 because you know uh, the mop material isn't available in for a 1 aught, 2 aught, 4 aught. Otherwise, it's going to be a really big uh, body with some really short arms. So, next we're going to use a mop for our uh, for our, our shell, our, our our hard shell on the back side. It's uh, it's armor, and we'll just do the same thing. Just tie it in right there by the cords, and we are creating a really fun fly now to work with. So this can be a little bit difficult, but just you know. Be patient, use your material clip if you have one, and just focus on keeping everything out and not tying more stuff in than necessary. I'm going to put a little bit of super glue now. It's highly recommended you let this dry before proceeding, otherwise, it could be a nightmare. But we're going to, you know, we like to live on the edge, and so we're just going to go ahead and proceed. Put a real healthy coating right here on those mop ends because, you know, that uh, core is what's critical in holding them in. So I want to make sure I got plenty of uh, super glue on there and bonding everything together now. <clears throat> We're going to be tying in some 0.2 millimeter wire by Semperfly. This is red and this is going to be our durability. Um, also segments the body but you're not going to really see it through a mop. So it'll add a little bit of flash but not you know noticeable in my opinion. I could be wrong. It doesn't matter about my opinion. It matters what the fish um, think of it. And this is not a fly that's been tested on fish but it will be. 
I generally fish a lot of these crazy flies just to see if they will work because you never know this could be the newest pattern that is going to be picked up by all the big companies no I don't really think so but sure is fun to try this and to accept the challenge so next material we're going to make a uh, we got to tie in a piece of uh, another piece of that uh, 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 sorry I keep forgetting the name strung rooster sorry and uh, we're just going to tie it in by the tip. These hackle fibers are just a little bit longer than we used before. Um, I want to create a real bugginess to this. And um, we'll go ahead and get our, uh, our thread up here behind the, uh, the, the eye. But um, before we do that, uh, we're going to be adding these uh, dumbbell eyes. And we're just going to figure eight these a bunch of times. So... I generally, I would say for most of my like clousers or zonkers or anything that I'm doing um, where I'm using like lead eyes like this, I generally do, I would say 20 to 35 wraps. You know, that seems a little high. Um, I don't even know. I don't count them. I do it until I can't move them very much or when I'm wrapping they don't move. But for the, uh, the crayfish or crawdad pattern invitations, I tend to double what I normally do. I really want a lot of uh, thread on there. And oops, apologize. The uh, dubbing loop um, got in my way. But uh, uh, I really, really want a lot of um, wraps on here. Because I, I fish this through shallow water, rocky. Um, it gets abused by the bass. Uh, carp are pretty rough on it I, I i believe also mainly because of what they do to it um but you know i like extra wraps here so uh, do a half hitch get it secure we're going to be um first we're going to create a dubbing um, using this uh the fluff here at the bottom of the feather so i just pull that off and i'm going to just slide that straight into my dubbing loop um, it's got sometimes you can pull it off without some of the the stem the core uh, but usually I get a little bit on there it's not too bad if you get some on there we're, we're not really concerned about you know this being super pretty um, it's going to be uh, twisted quite a bit and you're not even going to notice those ends but if they really bother you just cut them out or if you have like a really good chunk I would recommend cutting it out but we're going to use both sides of the fluff of this feather and then we will uh, get everything out of the way so that when we twist this we don't uh, you know twist everything like that hackle fiber or or our wire into this at this point and make sure you watch those uh, rubber legs uh, the antenna the long ones uh, because they want to just creep into it so go ahead and twist that up I hold it out in front here that's a, a good help just to uh, keep those away from everything else you see everything wants to naturally walk towards it but we got a good little bugginess here so go ahead and start palmering that around. Um, start to preen these uh, fibers back, uh, the fluff back, uh, so that we can you know, get a really good body, a really not dense, but a full body using this lighter material. Then uh, you know you could use rabbit fur at this point. You could use, I guess you could palmer a mop fly. I've never done that, so that might be my next fly. And then just end with your thread up and over that uh, dumbbell eye and go ahead and tie that off right there at the eye and that makes it a little bit convenient it also adds dubbing uh, that that fluff over the eyes so they're not as noticeable and I've got a little stem here that I don't like and so I'm just gonna come in here and trim that out uh, not a biggie but we got plenty of fluff here plenty of bugginess so the next step is we're going to palmer this uh, hackle fiber you just want even spacing as you go around uh, we're just creating a nice uh, buggy body using this. Um, imitate uh, a lot of properties of the crayfish, and it uh, makes it super easy to do and to uh, to fish and tie. So just go ahead and palmer that up, and as you get to the eyes, use the same or the the dumbbell. Use that same method, fold it up and over, and just go ahead and tie that off. And then I like to just pull it back and do a few nice securing tight wraps right in front of that and that now is secure just with that one wrap and we're going to be adding a little bit of uh, UV resin to this head so that should help bond everything together so I'm, I'm happy with just the one behind now here's the little tricky part we're going to fold this mop over and this mop is super dense super thick and we're trying to tie it off on the eye and so I actually will cut the, uh, the head off of this 
and uh, preen, uh, pull off some of that fluff so that I'm just going to be tying in the cord. Um, it's hard to trap all those cord fibers. It doesn't make for as clean of a head, but in all reality, um, fish don't care. So get those cords exposed, making sure not to let go and you know ruin everything we've done because this was tied in before what we just did. And we'll go ahead and do some over wraps, trying to trap those fiber, uh, the core fibers first, and then we'll work on adjusting all this fluff with our subsequent wraps. So just make sure you pull a little bit of that body of that uh, the chenille of the mop fly, I guess you'd call it, and uh, make sure we get a nice little head here, nice cores, and you can see it's sticking up quite a bit, and we're going to fix that now with the wire. So. This is not only just holding that mop in place, but also adding durability to the fly with the hackle as well. Anytime I, I put hackle palmered on a, on a fly, unless they're uh, palmered right with touching wraps like on a game changer, for example, I generally like to uh, rib it with a wire and uh, something like this, uh, definitely a, a 0.2 millimeter or they also, Semperfly offers a 0.3 and, and pretty soon a 0.5. Uh, I could see that being awesome on this to add a little bit more weight as well. So we're going to just bring this up right here around the eye and we're going to do about two, three wraps here just to secure it and then we'll wrap over it in thread. I found that uh, doing one or two extra wraps with your wire, as long as it's not a dry fly, adding the weight, um, it, it helps to keep that wire in place, especially when you're not wrapping it, I wouldn't say ultra tight, but you know, pretty tight. So snip that out and let's go ahead and we will um, do a whip finish now so just try and get one one or two wraps in front of all our thread not crowding the eye too much we still want need to tie this on and we'll just do a three turn whip finish and snip out our thread so pretty easy check right now to see if you got any uh, you know exposure push your thread back if you got too far up like I did I'm not too bad and then uh, just brush a little bit of a UV resin. The best way to do it is right here in the crack between the, the lead eye and the, uh, the, the head. That way you're not getting it on the eye. And uh, I can't tell. I don't think I got any in the eye, but you know it doesn't hurt to do a check with your bodkin. Um, and you can always wipe off any excess of your uh, resin you get on your eyes. But if they're painted eyes, that could be a little difficult. But and we're curing that now give it about 10 to 15 seconds with the uh, uv light and this is the mop cray but that's a little bright in my opinion um, we're going to snip these rubber legs so it's about you know our eyes are about uh, half the shank of the hook and then i'll you know the the arms are a little bit longer and then i'll extend the antenna the long antenna out a little further so brush it out um, you could use dubbing instead of that fluff which would make it a little bit buggier this hackle might be a little bit long but as it gets wet it should be just right um, appearance looks a little different when it's wet but that's going to lay down and create that nice bugginess but man that looks uh, pretty uh, pretty buggy and pretty moppy um, I don't know if it's going to be more effective than you know my traditional crayfish that I usually fish but sure is fun so let's segment this up a little bit um, it's a little bit bright so we'll add just um, dark colors I found that navy blue I think this is what it, this color is um, works really well plus some of the, the the crawdads I have here on my local waters have accents of blue but this appears more black the black is too much I wouldn't recommend using black but you know don't trust me or don't listen to me uh, you know try it out fish it and if it works it works then tell me about it and I'll try it so that looks pretty good I just don't want that bright bright orange usually they're a little bit darker and that that mop was really bright orange so that looks pretty good get a little bit more right in here in the center so there we go um, that's the mop crayfish mop crawdad mop uh, freshwater lobster whatever you want to call it um, We'll fish it. We're going to test it. I haven't fished this one yet. So um, this is kind of an experiment, a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, it came about on my live feed on Instagram tonight. So I thought I'd just, you know, hurry and tie one up and post it on YouTube just so everyone can see how fun it is in case you missed it. So you can see right there that it's going to drop right there on that bend. And as you strip it, it's just going to move perfectly in the water. So should be a lot of fun. Hopefully it pierced some lips, tie some up, have some fun. Thanks for watching.